All right, Cody, let's have an uncomfortable conversation. Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Shane. For those who are new, welcome back if you're returning. D'Angelo Wallace uploaded a video reacting to Tana Mojo's allegations on Cody Co. Tana runs a podcast called Cancelled with her co-host, Brooke Schofield. And the podcast is so big that sometimes the ladies go on tours. And in doing so, they have a live audience. If you know nothing about Tana, though, she had always been an open book. Before her podcast, she used to do a lot of storytelling times on her channel but when the ladies went on tour an audience member asked who the smallest Tana has ever slept with and this is part of the reason I do love Tana is because she is very open uh, and she did name Cody Ko. Cody Ko is another content creator who makes uh, commentary videos as well. Creators like Cody Ko or David Dobrik, when they're controversial, less people will talk about it. Cody Ko seemed to have a really big fan base that would be intimidating to go against. However, I don't care who you are, essay on a minor is never okay and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. It's not necessarily a bad thing that Tana was honest about what she thought about the size of Cody Ko, but what she did reveal is a crime. She said that it was okay to say that because Cody Ko had taken advantage of her when she was only 17, making Cody Ko 25. Anybody under the age of 25 at this point looks like a baby to me. I understand that Tana is stunning. She's gorgeous. Based off her story time, she was wild. I feel like she almost got enraptured in that influencer lifestyle. She's obviously starstruck. She admitted herself that she was a fan of Cody Ko before they even hooked up. Now here's the problem. These allegations are going to be really hard to prove without a doubt. However, D'Angelo reveals that there may have been a witness into what Cody Ko did. And this witness talked about it years ago. They're not talking about it now just because things are resurfacing. This witness seemingly did not have anything to get out of it. So, oh boy, we're gonna get into it. I live on the East Coast as far away from LA as I can in the States. I think it's safe to say that it seems like a whole different world. I think a lot of young, impressionable people get sucked up into that lifestyle. Again, this is all alleged because I cannot say that somebody did a crime based off off of someone else's allegation. However, I'm not stupid. I have been in situations where I am a young woman and people either try to coerce me for sex or try to get me drunk enough to take me home even after I've made my intentions very clear. It happens. I think that the saddest part though is watching Tana receive comments like, well, what were you wearing? Well, it's Tana, who cares? What do you, what do you mean who cares? What do you mean who cares? Like. That's a little concerning that you would even say that. Not just to women, but to men too. I feel like that is a huge problem about why people are not speaking up more about SA. It seems like men are almost deemed to like, like it. Oh, you liked it. She came on to you, you liked it. I can't speak for men. I'm not a man. Your gender doesn't matter. Taking advantage of someone is not okay. I don't care if they had a bad history. I don't care if they have a bad reputation. I don't care if the reputation is being promiscuous. This gets me so mad. I feel like a lot of us have shared the same experience, but how many of us have been groomed online? My first sexual experiences were for people over the age of 50, and I was 15 at the time. This is going on now. The only reason that we know about this happening is because Tana is an influencer and is not afraid to speak up. And even when she does, she's getting ridicule about, oh, well, who cares? It's sick and comments like that is the problem. Sorry, I just went off on my own tangent. We're going to get into D'Angelo's video right now. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I will link his down below because I highly encourage you to go over and support his channel. But there are a few things that I want to discuss with you today. Someone has been alleging for years now that you, one of the largest commentary creators on YouTube, 6.22 million subscribers on Tik is that TikTok? But it seems like Cody's most popular video was a that's cringe reaction. It seems like his top videos are cringing videos. Oh, the irony. <laughs> <laughs> knowingly committed a crime against her when she was a minor, but YouTubers and viewers alike are ignoring and discrediting these allegations solely because the person making them happens to be an unlikable woman online, Tana Mojo. And you know that people are ignoring this because nobody is working harder to bury this story than you. 
and you're getting away with it because commentary YouTube has a serious problem. I can't blame any of your viewers or my viewers for not hearing about this because you've done such a good job hiding it up until now that I only found out about it recently. The situation has been talked about by smaller channels, it's been discussed at length on other platforms, and it keeps almost hitting the mainstream, like with this Rolling Stone article or this H3 podcast discussion. But the reason it hasn't caught on yet, despite all of this, is that none of your friends, nobody on your level, nobody in the commentary niche with enough pull is willing to admit that this situation makes you look terrible. Again, I don't feel like anybody in his inner circle is going to stand up and say something, probably because his friends aren't exactly um, making the best choices either. If you hang around people who instigate or support the choices that you're making, you're not going to see anything wrong with it. And like D'Angelo is saying, I feel like Cody is going through great lengths to not say anything. A lot of people like him a lot and they really are like doing any kind of mental yeah. gymnastic to just ignore it. Nobody can definitively take these allegations as proof, but at the same time, they should still be looked at and not treated as an open secret and swept under the rug like you've been doing for so many years now. And from the way the situation keeps popping up more and more often, it's clear that there's only so much rug sweeping you can do before people start taking a closer look at things. It's very typical when one victim comes out and starts speaking about SA or any situation that they went through. It's very common for more victims to follow shortly after, whether they found the strength to do so because somebody else spoke up first. Regardless, I'm wondering if we're going to end up hearing about further allegations. I believe Cody got married, so hopefully there isn't any more. We both know that Tana Mojo is a YouTube personality with a history of lies, controversy, and genuinely problematic behavior that's become so entangled with her brand that her podcast is called Cancelled with Tana Mojo. He flashed an image of TanaCon. If you don't know what TanaCon is, she was basically, she was upset. <laughs> She either didn't get invited to vid VidCon or like she just couldn't go anymore. She was banned or something. Why did Tana Con happen? Feeling duped, betrayed, and heartbroken by VidCon, she decided that she would have her own convention on the same days and down the street from VidCon. Oh my gosh, I remember when this was happening. I couldn't believe the pettiness, but I also... <laughs> It was kind of fun to watch it unfold. It was not fun for what happened at the con, but uh, her event would be free and more fun. With it being free, I think she severely underestimated how many people would show up and that caused a lot of problems. Continues on to say it would be open for all those who felt unwanted and rebellious. There's an article here on Reddit that says, what is TanaCon and why was it such a disaster? I want to make it clear, this has nothing to do with whether she deserves something or not. She did not deserve. I want to make that very clear. I'm just, some people might not know what TanaCon is, so I'm just trying to give you a little bit of context. Six years ago? How long? That's how long TanaCon was? Nuh uh. The tickets were apparently $150, which included a gift bag worth equivalent or more than first entry, I think. Yeah, no, she's. I thought it was a free event. She booked a place that could only hold about a thousand people, but a whole lot more people actually turned up. Yeah, it was way more than a thousand. People show up and about half the people who bought tickets had been waiting in line for up to eight hours, while a good chunk of people who hadn't bought tickets just walked in no problem. But this isn't what today's video is about, whether it was free or not. All I know is that people were outside in line forever in the heat. I believe someone passed out, so there was a lot of dehydration and health issues. After a while, the event got canceled and security started kicking everyone out. Tana was promised that it would be the next day and that there would be more to do, which unsurprisingly was canceled without much notice. It was just a disaster. So it was basically just a rebuttal against VidCon to basically say, F you to VidCon. Everybody else, come to my event instead. VidCon will be dead. VidCon no more. And it just ended really bad. Again, just to give you a little bit of context into TanaCon. Speaking of this podcast, about a month ago, she hosted a live episode in front of an audience and the conversation turned to you. Who's the small you never had sex with. Oh my god, no one look at me, Cody Coe. I can say that. I was literally 17. 
This clip started making the rounds and people were understandably perturbed because if Tana Mojo was 17, you would have been 25. So people started speculating and Tana decided to set the record straight. I hooked up with Cody Ko when I was 17 and he was 25. She claims that not only were you fully aware of her age at the time, but someone even tried to stop you and you went ahead anyway. There was a situation with Gabby Hanna at a playlist live where she pulled him aside and told him like, yo, she's 17. And then we still went and hooked up. To be clear, 17 is under the age of consent in many states, including Florida, where Playlist Live used to take place. So this means that Tana Mojo is accusing you of statutory rape, and she's not trying to hide that. This isn't just some crazy tea. It was a crime. Nothing would make this situation better, but plenty of things make it worse, like the fact that she was a fan of yours at the time, adding an additional layer to the power dynamic you would have had over her. I grew up loving him, and I think I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was just, like, excited and a fan. Tana seems to have many feelings about this, which we'll go over a bit later, but she stated very clearly that the actions she's accusing you of are inexcusable. If I had a 17-year-old daughter mm. or a little sister or something, like, I would kill. I would never let it fly. Yeah. Yeah, if I found out that a 25 year old man was trying to court my 17 year old daughter, uh, I remember being a 17 year old girl and thinking that I was all grown and looking at older men and being like kind of interested because I felt grown and I wanted to be, I felt like I wanted to be desired. I'm near Boston. I don't see celebrities very often. Maybe if I was in New York or LA, it would be a much more common, common occurrence. But if I saw somebody that I was genuinely a fan of, I just know that I would be completely starstruck. Celebrities already have their own separate dating apps for a reason. There is a power dynamic there. They do have a responsibility to recognize that they do have a fan base and have a responsibility to not take advantage of that. At the very least of your minors. It's so gross. These recent allegations are bad enough on their own, but there are a couple of things that make them worse still. Things that many people don't know yet, but you do. You know that Tana has been making this same specific claim against you for years years now. Here she is back in 2021 saying the same thing. I was 17 at the time, 18. I started kind of hooking up with other people. Shout out JC Kalen, shout out Cody Co. But what lends the most credibility to Tana's- Honestly, I want to give an apology to Tana because so many people, including myself, I don't recall that one video. I didn't watch Tana religiously. I feel like that was really looked over. She said in 2021, that was three years ago. So I do want to make a point to apologize to Tana for not listening to that and not taking it more seriously. It does become a little difficult when you have a um, content creator such as her who has such outlandish and sometimes exaggerated stories that still doesn't mean that we shouldn't take her seriously. What is really the most damning thing for you, Cody, is a clip that you might not have even seen yet. See, I read the Rolling Stone article, I watched the YouTube videos about this, and they all missed something. And I understand why. The clip I'm about to show you is extremely hard to find. The original has been lost to time, and it's a wonder we have this on video at all. But if there was anything to give me any more clarity about these allegations before I formed my opinion, I was going to find it. Remember how Tana said that fellow YouTuber Gabby Hanna tried to stop you before everything allegedly went down? Well, did you know that Gabby is actually on record telling the exact same story several years ago? One time, I told a guy, I saw him making out with a girl at a party yeah. who was underage, and I pulled him aside and I was like, hey man, you probably don't know, I know she like looks a little older, she's underage watch it and he's like oh my god thank you for telling me and then he turned that this is really really bad oh, oh yeah oh, god he was told okay i have to i have to give credit to gabby she always okay <laughs> gabby like all of us have had her issues the problem is that she's put everything online for all of us to scrutinize if i put everything that i did wrong or everything that i was embarrassed with online a lot of people probably wouldn't like me either mingling with other influencers you're trying to network you probably know that if you approach that influencer who has at least six million subscribers probably less three years ago even a million subscribers to approach somebody at a party and then pull them aside and say hey just so you know this person is a minor honestly I have a lot of respect for Gabby for doing that that took a lot of courage because you are surrounded by that kind of 
decorum. You don't want to be like the buzzkill or the uncool person. I really do respect her for saying that. People make accusations all the time, specifically regarding things that are very difficult to prove or disprove, unfortunate as that may be. But when somebody makes an allegation and they say they have a witness and that witness can be found telling the exact same story years before any of this came out, that's not something I can just ignore. In a situation that cannot be proven, corroboration by a third party goes a long way. And frankly, Cody, the allegations against you seem to have been corroborated. But instead of researching to find these answers like I did, many of your fans seem far more interested in attacking your accuser. I have seen so many comments, but what was she wearing? It's Tana, so who cares? Well, it's Tana Mojo. The reaction to this has been unsurprising, but incredibly disappointing. Demanding proof that they know she can't provide, acting like she's only doing this to gain clout or ruin you somehow, despite the fact that she's never once put your name in a video title over this. I hate when people say that. Prove it. Prove it. How am I supposed to prove it? It's almost like you know that I can't prove it. So then when you say I can't prove it, it's like, well, obviously then it didn't happen. Oh, that that irks me. That irks me. That bothers me so much. Or worst of all, implying that a 17 year old could have truly consented to any of this. But let's be clear about one thing. That is not the case. No amount of retroactive age calculations or what if scenarios change the fact that what- I'm sorry, I gotta read what that person said. D'Angelo grazed over the screenshot, but I just wanna read it. Somebody wrote, this narrative to me is so insane. How is 17 years, 364 days a child, but 18 years is an adult? So one minute it's grape and the next minute it's not? Oh, she's 18, she's legal. That's still a child. That's still a teenager to me. She was 17 and her day is June 24th, 1998. The supposed date they had sex was the first or second week of May. Regardless, why is the man always at fault in these situations? Why are you going after an 18 year old in the first place? You're 25. That's what you're not getting. What's wrong with 22? What's wrong with 26? Why is it like sexy? Why is it a turn on to be like, oh, well, she's like barely legal. You know what I mean? Like it just, ugh. The law, the law, because a bunch of old Senate sat around telling you that you touching my body at 18 years old, as long as I tell you that it's okay, but it's the law though. The law said it's okay. So like my moral says, okay, why does the law dictate your morals? Can you answer that question for me? Why can't you be your own person and not a sheep and say, hmm, even though the law says that this is okay, hmm, maybe that little like voice in my head that I keep suffocating with a pillow is trying to say something and say, hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe um, she's so young or he's so young that being with an older person is exciting and it's enticing and it makes you feel desirable. It makes you feel sexy. An older man or an older woman wants me, but the law says it's okay though, so it's okay. F you. The law says consent in Cali is 18, however she wasn't raped or forced, therefore she gave consent at the time. Whether it's legal for her to do so isn't at all Cody's fault. <sighs> No amount of retroactive age calculations or what if scenarios change the fact that what Tana described would be, objectively speaking, a crime. A crime which you've said absolutely nothing about. And even if this wasn't illegal, you remember being 25. You would have known then, as I currently know at age 25, that nobody this age should need an explanation for why a 17 year old is off limits. Because you remember being 17 too. Now, thankfully, Tana's personal experience with this isn't one of trauma. In fact, I've seen people defending you by saying, Tana said she doesn't care, so why should any of us care? But that's not exactly what she was saying. I don't don't associate or hold it with trauma because I am such a comparative person where I'm like so many worse things have happened to me. And I think all of us do that where something traumatizing really does happen but you almost convince yourself that it wasn't a big deal or like you shouldn't feel a certain way about it. She might not be experiencing a lot of the long-term effects that come from multiple essays but I'm telling you, by the time that she hits 30, it's probably going to start hitting her really, really hard. And even if something isn't consciously internalized as an identifiable source of trauma, the body keeps the score. I know things manifest in ways other than me directly feeling them. Like maybe I don't yeah. feel 
traumatized in certain aspects from certain things and other things I do. But, you know, maybe they just manifest in ways other than directly feeling. The answer to why any of us should care is that a person has tried to come forward about her experience and has been met with the most vitriolic victim blaming I've seen in years. She's been dismissed, discredited, and disbelieved before anybody ever gave her a chance because it's Tana. When I was 25, 18 year old just did not look sexy to me. Or, or just like I, I, I just knew better. I have never been interested in someone younger than me since I graduated high school. I find your silence on the situation to be uncomfortable. Because I know that if Tana's allegations are true, then silence would be your only option, since telling the truth would be tantamount to confessing to a crime, and lying would put you at risk of being contradicted by a witness. And like I told you at the beginning, I'm not accusing you of committing a crime, but even if what Tana says is false, your silence is still grossly incompetent at best. Why are you choosing the path that would be your only option if you were guilty? If you think critically, you'd acknowledge the fact that she's had a track record of lying for clout, trying to cancel others with proven lies, scamming folks, and fake charity scams. She's crossed legal and moral boundaries plenty in the past lying, so are you surprised she ruined her reputability? Fact of the matter is it's not proven. He isn't obligated to address if it's not proven, just like you're not obligated to con continue on the subreddit despite making up your mind, already based on nothing but allegations and speculations. So leave then. Now, some seem to think that you're not obligated to speak up, and maybe that's what people around you are telling you as well. But from one creator to another, you absolutely have an obligation to, at the very least, call out the misogyny, the victim blaming, and all manner of cognitive dissonance that's coming from your audience in the name of defending you against allegations that you're too cowardly to address. And to be clear, this is cowardice, because you demonstrate it whenever there's controversy afoot. Tana's further claims make it sound like you're terrified. I said something about it online and it was starting to surface, and he texted me like, are we good? And was like, and like, mm. I said, yeah. And like, he was like, my wedding's coming up. You do have a history of making bad choices when you're terrified of people finding things out, like your history of using slurs. Five, nigga, six, nigga, seven, nigga, eight, nigga, nine, nigga. There's more clips than that, but the reason most people are blissfully unaware of them is because you posted your vague apology, not on Twitter, not on YouTube, but on Patreon. Uh, anybody that posts his apology onto a Patreon is like, uh, just a way to me of being like, yeah, I posted it, I made one, now you can't say anything about it, but like, you don't actually want the mass of people who are looking for an apology to hear what you have to say. Why would a past hookup of some girl be a big deal to your future wife if it wasn't like a really bad mistake. Uh, if you didn't want the fact that she was a minor getting out or maybe even wanting your wife to know that you were with Tana Mojo at all considering you both are kind of in the same, not necessarily group of friends, but you're both large content creators so I feel like at some point your paths are going to cross. I allegedly people are also going to Cody's wife's YouTube channel and leaving some colorful comments. James Charles is just another influencer that comes to mind of taking advantage of fans. Miranda Sings is another one. And I'm tired of seeing these large influencers using their platforms to take advantage of fans. Let me know what you guys think down below. Again, I'm curious if we will hear any other alleged victims come out regarding Cody Co. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I'll see you in my next one.